this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you for standing for the word. Amen. Sometimes we get renewed. Sister Kathy was talking about that renewed strength. We need to look at where we are and if things have become all crumbled up and things, let's just go in for a renewing. Right. Renewing. I, I, I worked on a house over at West, uh, West Irving one time and uh, went in and the floor was bad in the kitchen. And so he wanted the floor replaced. But when I got the floor up, the joists were rotten, crumbling. And so I had to take the joists out. And it was not uh, a studded house. It was boxed in. Very difficult because it didn't have nothing to put it back to. And uh, so I had to make a whole new foundation inside and set my block up and put my floor back in. Never done anything like that before, but I gave it a shot. And it worked, and he was satisfied with it. And uh, but I had to start all over, do it all over, all right. over brand new. Right. Amen. Put it in, and sometimes God wants us to do the same thing if we get things out of whack. Okay, Lord, right. this is me. I'm ready to to do it over. Amen. But I'd like to get to my text this morning. Uh, 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 the psalmist said, uh, 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 "I lift up my eyes from to the hills from which cometh my help." I read an illustration one. And uh, uh, this fellow was in this strange town and he was looking for a certain street and he couldn't find it. So he asked somebody the questions. He said, I'm looking for this certain street name. And, and, and the guy said, you're on it. You're already there. Well, he said, I, I looked and I didn't see the street sign telling me which street I was on. And the guy said, just look up. It's right there on the corner of that building. Amen. So all he had to do was look up, and he would know where he was at. Right. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to do today is just simply look up to the Lord and see where we are in the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember, uh, I don't remember the fellow's name, but his son-in-law, he was a, a preacher, and his son-in-law wrote... Uh, 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 biography of him and uh, and he titled it Look Up Brother Amen and that's just simply what we need to do today I'll say it again is just look up look up to the Lord God has got greater things in store for us if we will look up right. Hallelujah I'm not just preaching a pep talk today I'm telling us Amen God wants to do something for us yeah. Praise right. God. Hallelujah. Sister Kathy mentioned uh, 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 about renewing her strength. And the scripture said there in, in the 40th uh, chapter of Isaiah in verse 31 said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. Shall, excuse me. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Before they could get anywhere and get any higher, they had to get their strength renewed right. to be able to mount up. Right. Hallelujah. Are you helping me today? Praise yeah. God. I'm here to tell us God's calling on us to be greater men and women in the kingdom of God. Yeah. We've got this slogan from the president while he was running for office to make America great again. Hallelujah. That's a great slogan. And uh, I read every month uh, of new reports of how many jobs has been added in the job market and how many people are now on unemployment. Just 3.8%, I believe it is, of the people that's unemployed in this nation. And if they would look around, they could find something, Brother Danny, if they really wanted it. Right. Hallelujah. And so make America great again. Amen. What about making the church of God a great again? Hallelujah. Somebody said, has it ever fell apart? Just look around you and see how stagnant men and women are in the kingdom of God. And we realize that we need 
to get up a little higher for the presence of the Lord. When I get to looking around, Sister Teresa, and the things that are around me are aggravating me more than they should, and I realize my eyes need to be a little higher right. than just what's right here. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking too low. I'm looking around here, and, 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 uh, and my mind is set on this, 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 and this, but my mind and my affections need to be up here. Right. Right. When we get up here, then these little things down here are just trivial matters. Come on, yes. Come on now, help me right. preach. Amen. Trivial matters in the presence of God. I'm not saying that 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 it's not uh, 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 something couldn't be helped to fix it. But does it matter to the point that it takes away from us spiritually? Come on. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Right. If it takes away from us spiritually, we're looking in the wrong places. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 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 John the Revelator was about to see things that no man had ever seen. Daniel saw a lot of things in his day. Amen. Some of them could be explained and some of them couldn't. History brought out a lot of things in the book of Daniel. Amen. But John the Revelator saw some things that that he that nobody had ever seen. Now, if God had just brought the things down from heaven and showed it to John, and all he could see was just things around him, then perhaps those things would have gotten to him to the point that he said, well, there's no use in trying. My goodness, look what's fixing to come upon this earth and all the turmoil and all the trouble. Amen. These plagues and these terrible things that's going to be opened up on this earth. And now I'm down here and God is bringing them down here where I'm at. Amen. But God didn't do it that way. Hallelujah. John, at Revelation chapter 4, he said, John, come up hither. Right. Hallelujah. Come up hither. Oh, Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Come up hither. Hither means come up here in the spot that I'm in. Right. Hallelujah. I mean, John, come up here to the same spot where I'm at. I'm going to show you some things that's going to come to pass hereafter. Yeah. Hallelujah. So John didn't look at these terrible things going on in him down here in the middle of it. John looked at those terrible things that was going to happen from a higher perspective. Well, I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. And the terrible things are going to happen every day of our life. Amen. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We might lose somebody dear to us. But Brother Tom, if we're up higher, hallelujah, and we're looking at it from a higher perspective, we realize that God has everything in control. Well, I've been feeling the presence of God <coughs> when I went to bed last night and I was feeling the presence of God when I got up this morning. Hallelujah. And I believe I'm beginning to feel a little bit of the presence of God right at this moment. Hallelujah. But we've got to make our minds up. We're going to get in a higher plane. Well, praise the Lord. We know the scripture. Hallelujah. Praise God. We know the scripture where Moses was on the mount and God was going to give him in the process of giving him the Ten Commandments. Those two tables of stone. And I believe I read that God engraved those tables of stone with his finger. Come on. Well, that wouldn't be impossible because whenever people down on the mountain looked up and saw where God was stepping, there was nothing but fire flying out. Yeah. And then when they looked back, hey man, the mountain was still intact. Yeah. Praise God. So all he had to do was just take his finger and engrave, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not have any other gods before you. And on and on and on. God engraved those with his own finger. Hallelujah. 
And Moses was so close to the presence of God, amen, that he desired to see God in all of his glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have you ever desired to see the glory of God? Amen. Well, praise God. Every now and then we see a little remnants of his glory whenever we get into service and we begin to shout and dance and worship the Lord. But I'm telling you, there's more to the presence of God than shouting and dancing. Amen. Not taking anything away from it. Hallelujah. Let me just dance right on into his glory. Hallelujah. Let me get a little closer than that. And that's what I'm talking to us here today. Moses said, God, let me see your glory. God said, Moses, you can't look on me and live, but get in this cleft of this rock. Amen. There's a place by me in the cleft of this rock. Hallelujah. Moses, get a little higher than where you are in the cleft of this rock. And when I pass by you, I'll put my hand over you. Amen. So you can't see it all. But Moses saw the hinder parts of God as he went by. Hallelujah. He got in a better place than where he could see the glory of God. Well, praise the Lord. You've been hearing me testify and exhort some and my moanings and my groanings. Amen. When you catch me in that kind of condition, amen, or you or anybody else, Come on. we need to step just a little bit higher. Come on. Hallelujah. There's too many things around us that's yeah. attracting too much of our attention You're right. and becoming too much of a distraction. You're right. Hallelujah. Brother Rich, you remember that night he preached here on distractions and, yes, sir. and we had some and uh, most of that was getting laid at my feet, and I'm not mad at him. I, I, I let the thing distract me during that revival. Amen. And you remember that illustration he said he used? He preached on something that night at church, and the time he got home, the telephone was ringing in the kitchen. He said, just ringing off the wall, if I remember him right. Amen. And he got the phone down and answered it, and that woman was letting him have it over the message that he preached. You keep preaching like that, nobody won't come to church. Amen. Nobody won't do this and that. No, my family won't come to church. Amen. He said he was hungry. And so he got him a napkin and he laid it down there on the countertop and he laid the phone down on the napkin and he said, I'll fix me a bologna sandwich. You remember that? Amen. Fix that sandwich. And had it all fixed. And said when I picked up the phone. She didn't even realize. He said that he wasn't listening. Hey Amen. He just simply was not going to let those distractions. Take away from what God. Had given him to tell the church. That day. Well glory. Hallelujah. And we don't need to let the distractions. Of this world hold us. To where we can't get to that higher level with God. Hallelujah. There's too many things. Holding us down now. Praise God. Yes, sir. I remember right. Tommy Schooler, whenever he used to preach for us over that, Tommy, he'd tell me he's got Alzheimer. Yeah. Yes. Now, and every time I run into him, he forgets that he's not pastor and it's his son-in-law. And he won't make a date for me to come and preach for him right now. But I, you know, I, I don't make the date with him because his son-in-law is the pastor. He never invited me. Hey, Amen. But Brother Tommy would be preaching over there in the other building. And he'd get anointed and he said, somebody hang on to my pants legs, brother. He said, I'm about to leave here. Hallelujah. He got anointed. And that anointed had taken him to a higher level. You can listen to these singers whenever they're singing over here. And you can watch it when the spirit begins to move and take them to a higher level. Yeah. Amen. They're singing the same song. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I feel the glory of God. They're singing the same song. And they probably already sang those verses a couple of times. But Sister Kim, when the Spirit takes it to a higher level, sing it all night. Right. Hey, Amen. It's all right with me. Hey, Amen. As long as the presence of God is in it. I'm telling you today, we got to get in God's presence. And we're going to have to go higher than what we are to get there. Hallelujah. Well, praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seeking the face of God. And desiring Him more than we want anything else. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't have many notes this morning. And uh, 
some, you know, I can preach with notes here. And nobody says anything about it. Because most of the time we all do. But every now and then, I go other places and I take my notebook. I, I, I'm, I'm not as, as, as good as Brother Mitchell and these guys are with uh, laying them out and you can hardly even tell they have them. And if you don't look very close, you don't even know what Brother Steve does have them. And he tried to try to give me some counsel. Dad, <laughs> fix it in your Bible and clip them in there. And then when you flip the pages, it don't cause such, well, he didn't say it this way. He was nice. He don't bring on such a distraction. But I take my notebook with me. And I go into strange places. And I open up my notebook. And I come back two or three months later and somebody remembers it and thinks I forgot. Amen. And they'll get up and get to talking. Amen. And, and get to talking about preaching. And they're going to tell me how I need to preach. <laughs> Open up your mouth and let God fill it. And you don't need to write things down. Amen. And preach us a sermon that you have wrote down for three weeks. Amen. I heard it last night, if you will. Praise God. Amen. Well, now i got to go back there and preach today. Amen. Well, my fellows there, I'm going to open up my notebook and preach to him again. Are you helping me in just a few minutes? Amen. But I don't want to preach like he does, and I know this has been recorded and probably posted. Amen. You know, I don't care if they don't study. They're not going to open their mouth and let God fill it with anything. Right. Right. Hallelujah. You've got to get your face in the book. Right. Hallelujah. Look at it. Read what it's got to tell you. And study it out. Amen. And write a few things down. What would have ever happened if, <coughs> if Jeremiah never had Balaam describe heaven to record the things that God told him to tell? What would have happened if John the Revelator with nothing more than a third grade education? Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Amen. Hadn't it got him uh, something to write on and something to write with and begin to write out the revelations of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody recorded it. Amen. And they got to read it to the king. What Jeremiah wrote or had written and the king said, I don't need that. And he crapped it and threw the whole roll in the fire. Amen. Got old Jeremiah so discouraged. Amen. He didn't want to talk about God anymore. But it began to feel like fire in his bones and God began to step him up to a higher level. Are you having me pray? Amen. Call the way to describe. And I'll tell you again what I want them to know. And not only will I tell them what they burned up, but I'll tell them a little more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's get a hold of the presence of God today and let the Holy Ghost minister to us. Minister to us. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed till his sweat became as great drops of blood. And uh, people have disputed that, but if the scripture said that it became as great drops of blood, I really believe he sweated blood. I really believe the capillaries broke under his skin and blood actually come right out of him. Just like sweat. I really believe it did. Amen. And after he got through praying in such a magnificent way, the scriptures and angels ministered to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Jesus up on the mount praying and praying. And all of a sudden, John, Peter, John, James, and Peter, I believe it was, James, Peter, and John, went to sleep. While he was praying. That was the only time we found out they were asleep while he was praying. But while he was asleep, all of a sudden, he was taken to a higher level. And he began to glow. A supernatural glow began upon him. And when those three disciples woke up, the first thing they saw was Jesus with that glow on him and Moses and Elijah standing there talking to him. Hallelujah. Oh, Peter got beside himself. We need to build three tabernacles up here. 
Amen. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for Christ. They didn't need any tabernacles. They needed to get to a higher level to know what they were talking about. You know what's right in this book? It's right in this book. When you're looking at it, it's right in this book. The things that, it, that they were talking about. Jesus was about to be crucified and they were ministering to him and giving him the strength to be able to carry these out. We go through some things tomorrow, Sister Pauline. We don't handle it too good. Maybe we never get on a higher level today. What about getting on a higher level before we go to work in the morning? You know, Mondays, I, I don't have that much trouble getting up on Monday. <coughs> I've had a day of rest on Sunday. I know why I preach and teach on Sunday morning, come to church on Sunday night if I feel like getting in. I get up and say something. I'm not going to get ahead of nobody, but I'm not going to lag behind on God either. And uh, 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 that's enough to wire me out, but but I'm, 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 I'm rested, Sister Kathy, as you said a few minutes ago, because I've been in the presence of the Lord. So I get up on Monday morning, and it's not too bad. I get up sometimes, pray a half hour, 45 minutes on Monday. Now, on Tuesday, it's a little different. The circumstances around me have gotten a little bit tired. And so I like to narrow it down to 20 minutes. And by Thursday and Friday, I'd do well to get up and get to work on time. But I'm telling you, if we get at a higher level with God, His Spirit resting upon us all the time, wherever we are. I must be the one to be with us today. Amen. 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 But God is good to us. Yes, He is. And just, just get up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes. If I'm just getting, you know, it's easy to get disgusted. It's easy. Woke up, shake hands. All of a sudden, the conversation is stopped. Amen. Well, but I'm not down here. I don't want to be down here where there's just conversation. I want to get up here in the presence of God. I just feel like that. And we're walking to a place and, 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 and folks just avoid you. I do it all the time. Going to a funeral home somewhere and the owner of that home, the preacher, he believes this, he believes that, and some don't even know for sure what we believe. They just know it's been passed down from mouth to mouth for a long time and it's got twisted around. They don't know what we believe. And I'm telling you, when we get to a higher level, we'll be in the presence of God. I hope I've said something to help you today, but I want us to pray today. I really want us to come to his altars and pray and seek the face of God. God's got something for us, and he's got something greater for us today. Now, if I get thinking about it on the level, you know, uh, dad and mom get better, and, and uh, it don't bother them if we leave them at home just for a little while of attendance. Mom now has gained her strength back and she can get up and go to the bathroom by herself and not only does she do that, she takes the oxygen off and she'll pitch it over in the floor and get the cord out of the way and then come back out of the bathroom and reach over and get it. And you know, that, that, that's, that's not made a, a big accomplishment to some, but if you saw what kind of condition she was in two months ago, that's a major accomplishment. Dad, Dad's so much better that you can't hardly tie him down. And, and they're doing so much better, they want to go home. And then I, 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 the work out there, my part of him, I think he's done it with, looking good on his part. But my part, I ain't touched it yet. And I've got stuff barred, I need to get back home to the people. Amen. And, and I, if I get to worrying about it all, it'll take me down here. And I'll get to it when I get time. I need to stay up here in the place. That's right. That's right. How about you today? Yes, Lord. How about That's you today? Right. Stay up there in the presence of God. Where God can move on you. Oh, I feel the glory of the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Where God can bless you and help you greater than you've ever been helped. If we stand this morning, God bless us. God bless you.